Hello, welcome back. Thanks very much for joining me again. Today's project I'm looking at is um, something that we found and we thought, oh, these look quite interesting. It's a little calculator kit. There we go. Sorry about the label on the front. Um, what I'm not going to do, the first thing I'm going to say about these is um, I'm not going to take it out of the package because it's full of dust in here. These are little rubbery um, push buttons and I don't want to get dust and rubbish in there. So I'm just going to leave it in the packet I may even try to use that when I'm actually fitting it um, but what I'm going to do is just turn a little desk calculator kit um, with that today I've got um, a piece of oak here I've no idea what this is like it's got a bit of sapwood and it's got a bit of heartwood in there I don't know if you can see um, I don't know quite how this is going to turn out it's rough sawn we'll see what happens I have started off by um, cutting it square obviously and I've forgotten how big it is already, 120 millimetres square this is, I've marked the centre. What I'm going to do next is basically um, use a set of compasses just to mark around the outside. I'm then going to use, this is just the way I do it, you might have your own methods, I'm going to use a 38 millimetre Forstner drill bit over on the drill the other side of the workshop to drill a hole just so I can mount this um, and I'm also going to mark um, a circle around there and I'm going to cut the corners off on the bandsaw. You can do it on the lathe but it just makes a lot of mess so cutting the corners off on the bandsaw gives me something to light the fire within the house in winter um, and also means I have less mess to clear up afterwards. So I'm going to do that, I'll bring this back in a moment and then we'll look at mounting it and turning it and see if I can, um, I haven't tested this yet, the first one I've ever done, um, see if I can do a, a slight off centre turn on this cross grain turning here so unlike um, many people you see turning boxes when they're turning with the grain this is turning across the grain so hopefully I'm going to get a grain pattern across the finished piece. Righty ho there we go I've just drilled a hole in there bear in mind that there's no dovetail in there that's just a flat hole drilled with a force and a bit and I've taken off the edges uh, and I'm now going to it's a bit of a squeeze on here to be honest but this does just fit on there and I can use that chuck with, I think these are the uh, 35mm jaws, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you'll have different chucks and different sizes I'm sure for, for this, so whatever size drill is the most suitable for mounting it um, this way. Um, I'll just adjust the camera and now point it at the lathe instead of at me. The lady is much better looking than I am and we'll look at what we're going to do um, on the rest of this piece now. Now the next thing I'm going to look at is the depth of the actual calculator and I use my calipers I can tell you it's um, just over eight and a half millimetres but I also have to consider that I've got to stick this down into the wooden base at some point so it might be worth leaving just cutting fractionally deeper so I'm going to cut at nine millimetres deep um, as always with any kit um, because specifications can change always measure the parts of your kit before making it don't rely on this video um, when you come to see it it could be six or eight years old so for the time being I've got my Forstner bit um, I can't recommend Bosch Forstner bits enough I've tried all sorts these made in Bosch made in Austria I cannot fault them they're absolutely fantastic um, I'm going to drill nine millimeters deep into here I could do it by hand I just think it's much easier to actually drill nine millimeters um, and, and use the markings on my tailstock to make sure I get that depth right I'll then finish off enlarging the hole to the diameter for this which is pretty much 70 millimeters um, first to cut by hand and at 70 millimeters yes you can do it I just think this is a bit easier Now, 
as anyone that's seen these before will know this, these are warts and all videos and actually what I need to do is to shape this top first because what I'm going to do is take some wood off here so I've just drilled a nine millimetre hole and then when I take some wood off the top and start to finish it it won't be nine millimeters it'll be less so um, let's do a little bit of finishing on the top then we'll look at opening out the hole and getting it the right depth So it's beginning to look a little bit like I want it to look when it's finished. Now it's quite a nice looking piece of wood. It needs um, a bit of finishing on here. But next of all, let's just make sure we put a marking in for the calculator. As I said, this is this is roughly 70 millimeters. So I'm going to set my um, protractors at uh, 35 ish, but make sure I cut inside the line when I mark it on the outside. When I said protractor, I meant compasses. I'm a man. I struggle to talk and think at the same time. All right. Hopefully you can see that line there. So that's roughly um, the mark that we need to cut. That will give us our center for the calculator part. So we'll now cut that out, uh, double check the depth, and then we'll look at, um, um, maybe you could put some kind of cutting detail into this uh, and then finishing this side so we can turn it round and do the back. Okay. Still fractionally too small. When it gets to this edge here and you're getting close to the fit, when you cut down, don't cut as I just did then, all the way down, cut it just a little bit, then test this, just in case you've made an error, and then you can adjust it again afterwards. So there you can see, I've just cut a very small rebate there, just to see if that's gonna fit in and oh yeah I reckon that fits in with the plastic bag on so I reckon that will fit in just nicely so I can now use that edge I just put there that little rebate and just cut a little bit further down all the way to the bottom and then we hopefully got the right depth and width um, to set the calculator part in. Because I'm cross grain turning, I often find if the lathe is spinning whilst adding sanding sealer, which is what I'm doing now, sometimes you can get little grooves in the grain of the wood that it doesn't quite get into when it's spinning too fast. So um, I literally just like to go over just by hand like that. Uh, and now you can look at finishing, polishing that however you want to. I'm just going to use a little bit of hard wax on that. Um, and then we'll turn it round and, as they say, finish the bottom. Let's just double check it fits. There we go. Yeah, and it's set down slightly low, but I haven't stuck it in yet, remember. So I've changed my jaws. Actually, I haven't. I've changed my whole chuck. Um, but you can change your jaws for the right size for the larger diameter. Now, what most people would do, and you can do, no problem at all, is actually just mount it flat on the lathe like that. What I'm going to try and do, um, whether this will work or not, I don't know, I have done it before, is just set the piece at a slight angle so it's not quite centred. And you do have to be a bit careful where it's mounted on here to make sure all the bits of your chuck jaws are actually connecting with the wood because you don't want this to come flying off because um, uh, yeah, it's going to hurt. 
Okay, I think that's okay. Um, it's going to be quite some knocking on this wood to start with. If you can see how that's going to turn, now it looks completely um, off kilter, and it is. Um, but you can just set it, and the reason I'm doing that is so when the calculator's finished and it's sat on a desk, it's just going to have a slight angle on it, hopefully easier to use and easier to see. The next thing, in case anyone asks me, because someone's bound to ask me, when they've seen me using this tool, what tool is it? I can tell you it's a tool that I made myself with one of our tools still. I haven't used it for a while, but it works extremely well. Um, so um, we sell the tool steels as well, and it's like most of our tool steels, and the handle I've made with a little connector, it's a double-ended tool. So there we have the um, off-centre turned a bit. I can put that on there like that. Hopefully you can see that. Let's just adjust the camera slightly. Get it in the middle of the shot and zoom in a bit. There we go. Right. Okay. So you can now see the piece that I've made. Um, I'm still not going to take the plastic off the calculator part because it's still full of dust in here. But that's going to fit quite nicely in there and look quite good. On the base, um, well, there's a variety of things you can do on the base. I haven't got this quite flat because I got the shape I wanted. If I got the base flat, um, I'd have taken off quite a bit more here and lost that little bit of sapwood I've got around the edge. Um, I may well use a bit of our self-adhesive flocking sheet. It feels a bit like velvet that sticks on. It's quite good for not slipping because you don't want a calculator zooming across your desk. Um, or maybe some little um, rubber feet on the bottom, some, something like that, um, just to stop it sliding. Um, and of course, if you want to do any more polishing, you can do. Um, I'm going to polish this up a little bit more on my polishing wheel. And then we'll look at actually fixing the calculator into the hole. Well, there we go. There's my little off-center base. Hopefully you can see that. The calculator will fit in like so. I'm not going to put it in in the workshop because the workshop's full of dust. I'm covered in dust and I don't want to get any of that on the nice little rubbery buttons, but I will do what I usually do. I shall go indoors, clean myself up, um, stick that in, put a base on the bottom and then I'll put a still of that up at the end of the video. Um, it's a cracking little kit. You can stick it in there with whatever you like. You don't need to get the calculator out because it's solar powered. It's got an on button and an off button. It will hold a little bit of charge and it does work for a little while in quite dark light because my office is one of the darkest places known to man, I believe. Um, so I hope that's um, been helpful, useful, maybe an interesting little project that you haven't seen before. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed making that. Um, I hope you'll enjoy making yours too if you get one. Until next time, safe turn in and we'll see you soon. Bye bye for now.